Um, so at this point, if you managed to follow along, hopefully you have this screen that looks something like this. This is, uh, at the top you've got My Site and Reader. WordPress.com is a very full-featured website or service in that it allows you to create multiple websites. They all will have, however, the .wordpress.com, unless you pay to remove that. And it also has the ability for... It's kind of also like a social network, in that your website can get comments and likes and all of that from other WordPress sites. And that's useful because then you could build a network. You could build a, a collection of... of a, like-minded websites and followers and all of that and get more traffic to your site. So WordPress.com is half a website for you to build your own presence online and half a social network in a sense. So we just need to be mindful about how to navigate WordPress.com uh, because we've got at the top again my site and reader. If you go to reader for a moment it might not really show you much, but Reader is where you would look at the latest blog posts of the other WordPress sites you follow. So if we browse around for various concepts, various topics, keywords, and let's say I find a great blog on WordPress.com of something I like, I can click Follow. And so then their latest blog post will show up on my Reader. I want that for my site. I want that I'm posting stuff and I want people to come across it and click follow and then they'll see it on Reader. Obviously that's easier said than done and the big thing about that is it's about content which we're getting to. But right now we're just navigating the wordpress.com interface. At the top right is a way to post something quickly but don't worry about that yet. We have your account at the top, don't worry there. Notifications that little bell would tell you, you got a new like, you got a new comment, you got a new follower, like a social network. Under My Sites, we have this basic screen where we'll see statistics, how many hits am I getting, how many visitors throughout the weeks or months, what are the most popular pages, where are people coming from, are they coming from Facebook, uh, what are the search terms? What are the keywords that people searched to find my site? So a bunch of great statistics. Obviously ours is really boring at the moment because we don't have any activity. We just made a blog. We just made a site. And on the left side we have a variety of commands. I'm going to skip them all because the important thing that I want to tell you is we want to get used to, let's say you, let's say you go home. And when you go home and you go to WordPress.com and then log in, it's going to take you back to this screen, the reader or my site. It's going to take you to this screen, and that's not really where I want to be. I want to be in the WordPress dashboard. The WordPress dashboard is where I can get the full power to work on my site, which is found right here, WP Admin. So when you go home and you log back into WordPress.com as soon as you can, then switch over to My Site, and then WP Admin. So click on that, WP Admin. And that takes you to this screen with Dashboard on the side and many, many options on the left. Once you're on this screen, I'm going to go into detail on a couple of screens just because we do need to have a basic understanding of WordPress before we can write anything. Uh, but I want to look at some of the important settings of our site first. WordPress is very useful in that it has the ability for people to comment on your blog posts. But actually, by default, it's set up that anyone can comment anyone can write anything and therefore you might get spam you might get off-topic comments so we're going to talk about instead uh, some settings that I recommend so is everyone here under under the dashboard 
look up here. What you're going to do is you're going to go to my site and then you're going to click on WP Admin. So once we're in the dashboard, on the left side here, you're going to have a variety of sections. We're going to hover the mouse over Settings. So put your mouse under Settings. And we have these. I won't look at every single one of them, but I will look at the important ones. Under Settings, let's select General. Right now, the title of my site, if someone were to visit my site, the title would look a little weird. The best vector site. I want it to look like real spelling and, and so forth. And that's what we're seeing here, site title. So if yours also looks all run together and, and lowercase, take a moment to write what it really should say. You can use apostrophes and exclamation points and all of that. Capital letters. So the site title is what appears for the user. Tagline is a sentence that explains what your site is about and we're going to think about it in terms of SEO. So writing for SEO for our site is not just about actually writing blog posts. There's also other things we need to take it take into account, such as the tagline. So in this one sentence that I have to explain what my site is about, I should uh, include within it some of the keywords that my site is about. So if you take the SEO class, we talk in there in depth about working with developing your keywords, your key phrases. Uh, which is making a list of words and, and sentences that what is your site about and using those words and phrases throughout your site properly. So Victor's site, I'm gonna go back actually, Victor's Bakery. Victor's Bakery. This is a bakery. I want to be found. I want people to visit my site. I want people to read my blog, maybe buy my product, my, my pastries. Um, I'm going to entice them to visit my site and buy with the, with the blog and other aspects. But in my keyword research, I figured out I want to target certain words and, and phrases and concepts. So in this tagline, I'm going to write, in my case, East Lakes Premier Family Owned bakery. What I've done here is I've added a location to my title. If your business doesn't have a location, then obviously you can't quite add that. But in my case, I've got a physical location on Main Street, let's say, in East Lake. So I, uh, I wrote that. And then I'm writing family-owned bakery. I could have easily just written bakery in East Lake. That's not optimized enough. I have to be specific. Modern SEO is about being specific. There's so many people searching for so many things, you're going to be a needle in a haystack. If you're more specific, you could be that needle that gets found. So I've written family-owned bakery because I'm trying to cultivate and create a persona online about being a family-owned bakery, about hand-making our, our food, about it being natural, and all of these things that I've just told you, that's part of my keywords, my keyword strategy. Handmade, all natural, family owned, vegan, East Lake, founded in East Lake. All of these concepts that define my site in total. So it may, it may be more than what you have an idea of what to write right now. But the idea is to write a sentence that is specific about your company in case someone is searching for something that they need. So if someone needs a bakery in East Lake, and then that term premier could catch attention and also family owned that could get people that's a you know thinking in terms of marketing, that's me being a salesman to entice people. Oh, it's not a corporation. I'm, maybe I'm not going for the people that care about me being a big famous chain. They care about my bakery being a small family owned one, that mom and pop shop that they can go to and buy their 
their, their cupcakes at. So that might take a bit to craft. You don't have to fill it out now, but if you have an idea, you can. And you can always change it later. We need to change our time zone because this is set to UTC0, which is where in the world? England. London, England. We're not in London at the moment. So let's change. Does anyone know our UTC offset time? That's okay. Because what we can do is search for Los Angeles. That's close enough. So uh, search here, or the trick is if you click the box and then start typing LOS, it'll jump you to Los Angeles. So make sure you set your time zone. The, the purpose of this is we will be able to schedule posts, meaning uh, I can write a post but not have it show up until next week because maybe I write a weekly post. So if I set the right time zone, this will be published at the right time. Date format, you can change that if you want. Time format also. Week starts, you can change that if you want. Language. This is not to change the language of the interface. This is what is the language that you're primarily writing in. If you want to change the interface language, follow that link. If you want it to be in Spanish or Chinese, you can change that there. This is just what's the language that you're writing in on your blog. You could what? Well, this uh, you could if you want all of these icons to be in another language, you can set that. And then if you're actually going to be writing your content in another language, you can set that. Yeah, so you can have two different ones if you want. Any change that you make here, make sure you save at the bottom. And if you want to have an icon for your blog, you can upload one. I won't do that because I don't have a picture handy, but if you have a picture of your logo of your company, you can upload it and it'll be branded. Instead of having the little anonymous man right there, you will have a picture of your icon, and that will show up on your blog post that you write, or if you comment on someone else's blog post, that's good for branding, that's also good for SEO. If you're not just a gen another generic user, and you do take the time to put your logo and you comment on other people's blogs and they see a real logo or a real headshot or whatever that entices people to have them believe that you're more legitimate than the generic site uh, that is uh, right off the shelf. Any questions on this screen? All right, let's go over to the, uh, the writing screen. Not much really to change here. Um, this will make more sense a little bit later when we write something and when we organize our posts. We can organize via categories and tags, and I'll go into detail what those are. But this is saying if we had our categories set up, we can say what's the default category to use whenever we post something. Right now it's set to uncategorized, which right away is a mark of an amateur. This is not good for your SEO. Later on when we create categories, we'll come back to the screen and set this properly. Because everyone gets this by default. And so if everyone is uncategorized, your site doesn't stand out, your site is not findable, it's not organized, it doesn't help your SEO. We can't change it here, but we found it here under the writing settings. Okay, so if, um, if my site was going to be a review, Probably more than that. We're going to try to develop three to five categories. What kind of reviews are you doing? A review for a book, that's one category. A review for a website, that's another category. A review for a recipe, that's another web, that's another category. So you want to be specific. What that's kind of thing? One, well, we can't use anything, can we? Because we haven't created the categories yet. Oh. 
default post format is standard. Don't worry about that just yet. Default link category, don't worry about that. So I'm not really going to change anything here. We can have testimonials, and this shows show 10 testimonials at a time. If you want more or less, you could. Something called portfolio projects. Most of us don't need that. If you really are curious about it, see me during the break and I'll explain it. But most of us don't need this portfolio project. And we can set up so a special email so that if you write an email and email it to that special address, it will then automatically post it for you. That's useful, not really, because we've got the WordPress app. The WordPress app for your phone is way better. You can download the app for Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, and have the full power of your WordPress site right on your phone. And I think post by email is pretty limited. So I didn't change anything here, but this is not a very useful screen. Let's go to reading. There's some important stuff here. We'll have to do this a little bit later, but this is the screen where you set what kind of site you want. Remember we have previously said you can make a website or a blog. There's also a third kind, a hybrid site. By default, our WordPress sites are blogs in that the home page is always changing because if I publish something once a month, my home page shows my latest post and that's the default my front page my home page will display my latest post so every time I publish, some, publish something new it'll push the old one down and the new one is at the top next month I publish something new those two go down and then a new one is on top so my home page is always changing if I don't want that if I want the home page to always say the same content but then I want to have the blog posts on their own page, I would set up a static page. But we can't fully set it up yet because we don't have a home page to display and we don't have a blog post to display. I mean a blog page. We don't have a home page, we don't have a blog page, so we can't really set it yet. But this is the screen we're going to eventually. So don't change that yet. You're, keep it on latest post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's going to depend on your on your theme. So we can find a theme that has a static picture always, and then your blog posts, the newest ones, will be right below it. So that'll be a theme once once we explore what theme options do we have. Okay. I was just thinking first time new members are not going to dive into one. They might want to look at history rather. Yes, exactly. You can decide how many posts at a time to display. This is a, this is ten. You can show more or less. So if I put let's say three, it's going to show my first three posts in the next page, next page, next page. This is not really that relevant regarding SEO because nowadays you might see websites that have what is known as the infinite scroll. You look at some five things at a time and when you get to the bottom five more load up without you having to push next. So this is not really that relevant anymore. Um, and it's also though going to depend on another setting we'll look at and your theme. So I won't change that and you don't really need to. What I would say to change is the syndication feed shows. I would say something like three or five. And what this is saying is if someone subscribes to your blog, they're going to get an email that is going to show perhaps a digest of posts. And if we keep it at 10, it's going to show 10 posts at once, which might be a big email for them. And then if people get annoyed on your email list, they'll unsubscribe. So this is not related to SEO, this is just related to keeping your readers happy. I would recommend three or five 
at a time to not overwhelm people. This is all my content. They'll have the ability to read more, page one, page two, etc. But here, how much will they see at once? I'm going to recommend five. In addition to that... And no change to ten posts? That's right. Okay. In addition to that, I will then also say for each article, just put the summary. I don't want to send all five of those full blog posts to people. Then what incentive do they have to come back to my site to read? If I select summary, they will get a snippet of it, and we can decide how much. They'll get a snippet of it, and then a button that says read more, and that'll bring them back to your site. So that's useful. Back on your site is where they will read more articles, buy your product, get in contact with you. On email, it's just kind of a bit of a dead end unless you direct them elsewhere. And doing it this way will do it for us. Now at the beginning when, I, when we created this, I did say this is going to be real. This will be found unless you go to the settings here and say hide me from the search engines. So if this really really is just going to be some sort of test and test site you don't really want it to be visible then uh, you can select either discourage search engines or make it private. I'm gonna say discourage search engines. But notice neither of these options block access. It's up to the search engine to honor your request. And Google is good about it and Bing is good about it, and the search engines are good about for honoring this request. So if you're going to just use this WordPress.com site for learning, maybe put it on Discord search engines. The, 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 web, the, the search engines don't need to know about the site. But if you are going to have a real site that you want to be found, keep it on the first one. Keep it on allow search engines? Yeah. Oh, but why did you put Discord? I'm sorry, I heard you guys didn't. If you're going to use this site just for learning purposes without any real content, then maybe perhaps you don't want the search engines to find it. Wouldn't it be better to just make it private? I'm not quite sure what the big difference between the two are. Usually I put it on, on discourage. This one says, I would like my site to be private, visible only to myself and users I choose. It doesn't really mention about blocking it from the search engines though. So I kind of feel it still might be sound by the search engines. You know, I got one of my family to see it, but then just, then they could see it either way. If you just say discourage search engines, they could still find it? Yeah. Okay. If they have the address, they can still see it. But if they tried to search it on Yahoo or whatever, they might not find it. But if they have the address, they could. And then on this one is that you specify to those you give them the address and then they can access it. So if I check the last one that says private, then my family can't, can't search it on exactly. search engine that way either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The next part right here is very useful. This helps us uh, capture people, capture users on our site, show related content after post. You've probably seen this. You've seen articles where you read top five, um, you know, top five vacation destinations. When you get to the end of the post, there's another three articles that are interesting to you, so you click on it and read more. And eventually, you're there for half an hour and you've read a bunch of blogs. I want that for my site, and it's on by act, by default. Notice it will show at the end of the post related. That's nice. What I would recommend is select also the option. Use a large and visually striking layout. It'll show a picture, too. I think people might ignore the one that is simply text. They might think of it as an ad. And if you put in a picture, this picture will come from your blog post itself. So if you've got a good picture in your blog post that's eye-catching, it'll have the related section at the bottom of the page and a picture to entice people to click and read more. This is what I said earlier about scroll infinitely. At the top we're saying show 10 posts at a time, but then at the bottom it says scroll infinitely, seven pages, seven posts on each load. So if you don't want 
for people to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. If you do want them to get to 10 posts and the next page, you would need to turn that off. And then up at the top, you will be able to tell them, show 10 at a time, 3 at a time, whatever. But if you have anything active here, and also scroll infinitely, this one kind of cancels out the other one. So this is up to you which one you like. SEO-wise, doesn't matter. Yes, uh, so that related content there is going to be, that's actually built in. WordPress keeps track of all of that, which posts were added on which month then it's up to us to add a widget, and we'll talk about widgets, to actually display that on screen. I just thought that would be more organized. It could be, yes. And um, so this is what I'm saying about which might be more useful to you. And then we'll also have the ability to have a search box, so people can search that way too. Enhanced feeds. Uh, I would just leave these as is. What this means is if someone subscribes to your blog, do you also want them to see the comments count? Do you also want them to see the tags? I don't think this is that useful. It might also be cluttering the user's inbox too much because in addition to having your post, it's going to have all this extra other stuff. I don't recommend any of those. you can let people follow or subscribe to your blog that might be useful if you turn that off they, the the person that is that visits your site may not be able to follow your blog so i would leave it on that will entice them to follow your blog to read your blog to come back to it these two are the boilerplate emails that are sent if someone follows your blog or follows a comment, people can follow comments on a particular post. This is the email that gets sent out to them. You can change the terminology if you want here. I'll leave it as is, but you could if you want to. And if you make any changes on this screen, which I think we did, click Save Changes. Any questions on this screen before we go on? Let's look at the next one, the discussion screen, the discussion settings right here. There's a lot of important uh, items here. Most of them are already set properly, but I'll mention the ones that might be important. Um, so all of these that are on are just fine. Don't worry, they're good. Um, there's a section here where you can decide, okay, other comment settings. The second one, users must be registered and logged into comment. This is a way to prevent spam con comments. A person must be logged in, must have an account before they can comment. Now, however, I don't recommend to use this one. We'll use a different setting. I don't recommend this setting because this is also, this might prevent the spammers from commenting, but this might also prevent the legitimate people from commenting because I don't want to go out of my way to then create an account, verify the email, and then finally be able to comment. I want to be able, as a real user, to comment as soon as I can. So having that extra step is known as friction. The user is experiencing friction, meaning anything that prevents them from accomplishing the goal that they want to. If you're trying to buy a product and you have to jump through all of these hoops, that's a lot of friction. They're going to go elsewhere. They're going to go to another website where it's easier. So right here you would be creating friction if you want people to comment. I know that if I want to comment, I have the idea I want to comment on a site, and if they're using a more modern way, I can just comment right away. Easy. But then a site where I have to register and all of that, honestly for myself, I usually skip it. Never mind. I had a great comment, but never mind. I move on. Sometimes it's so great, I do want to comment, and I do jump through the hoops, and then I hate myself because it's even more hoops than I thought they would be. So then I don't comment anyway. So 
I don't recommend that one. Instead, so I'm going to skip these for a moment. Instead, we're going to jump down. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. That one I do highly recommend. What that is saying is, anyone can write any crazy thing. I will then get an email that says, new comment. I can get a preview of it right in my inbox and three buttons. Approve, deny, spam. And right from my inbox, click spam and it's gone. Or I can click approve right in my email and it's public. So that way we'll let the real people that want to comment, comment right away. And that will prevent the spammers from getting through. The second one, which is already on, is useful. A comment author must have a previously approved comment. So if you've already said yes to the comment of another of a user, you'll probably say yes to their future comment because they wrote something legitimate the first time. If you're, if you're wanting to control that every single time, well, you would turn it off. And every single time you'll have to vet every comment, which that could be unwieldy, right? So that's a, that's a good problem to have. A lot of comments, a lot of legitimate comments. That means you've got a lot of activity. You're, maybe you're getting some fame for your site. Your SEO is working. And then this might be creating some friction for you because then you're going to have to approve all of these comments. If you turn on the first one and the second one, the first one gives the user the ability to comment easier the next time, making it easier for you as well. It never says, like, first time comment or anything. It just says comment. It, it makes it look like um, they have to have the same history of first comment. Even. Well, there always has to be a first comment. So if they, if they comment today or tomorrow or at some point, it is going to be their first comment. And once you've approved that one, then their next comments will come through. Com it should just say first comment. It must be manually approved. We checked someone and said, the comments must be always manually approved. But that works in conjunction with this one, because oh, then okay. they, work yes, they work together, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. Now, what would get annoying is, okay, now I've got to press spam for all of these comments. I've got to check and press spam, spam, spam. No, because then with this next one, this one will automatically take care of the comments that have fallen in the trap of spam. The ones that look like spam, the ones that have links like spam, the ones that are written like spam. So uh, these three here are your line of defense against uh, spam comments. And so if I back up a little bit, email me whenever, and all of that. So you'll get these emails here. You'll get an email when someone posts, if there's a comment to moderate, if someone likes a post, etc. You can turn this on or off because you might get a lot of emails, depending on how popular your site is. I'm going to leave them all on for the moment, and later on as I get a feel for this, I might, uh, I might cut it down. We have here a, we have some lists here. Um, comment moderation and comment blacklist. On the moderation list, if I put in some keywords here, these posts will automatically be held for moderation. But that's sort of canceled out by what I've already done at the top here. Comment must be manually approved. So don't worry about that one too much. The next one is the one that you might want to work with, the comment blacklist. When a comment contains any of the words in this content here, or the name of the person or the address of the person, it will be marked as spam. So any keywords that you put here will automatically right, right, right away go to spam. So let's say you've got a, a blog all about cats, and therefore I don't want to hear anything about dogs. So I could put in here that the keyword dogs is going to automatically get spam. Go to the spam folder. The problem is it will match inside words. So if you 
if you added the word press, this will also trip up the word WordPress. So I think this is way too harsh. I don't really use blacklists. WordPress I don't think has a very good way to manage it. I think it's way too dr draconian. It's too strict and at the same time too broad. So I don't bother with those really. Uh, these comments and follow, those are fine, don't worry, markdown, don't worry. Avatars, people can have a little icon next to their name instead of a instead of a blank, these are all fine. If your site is about PG-rated stuff, R-rated stuff, etc., you can set that, and that way you're covered for some liability if the underaged people go to your site that is not for them. If your site is for 13 and up, you can do that. So you can, you have to decide what kind of content is in your site just for you know liability reasons so that your site is um, you know compliant, best for the people that it's for. Yes. I left it this, the same and you'll have to decide what, what, what you would like about it but what that's saying is let's say this is the problem that you'd, left, let, that you'd love to have like I said I want a lot of people commenting I want a lot of activity but maybe there's too much activity and people's comments are being lost so if I say in 14 days you know stop accepting comments you could do that it's not good or bad um, it's just your preference of what you'd like so I left it as is people can keep commenting so someone next year could still comment on something from last year that's fine if I say well I want this to only be active and relevant for one week then I can turn that on and then I won't take any new comments because who cares about that thing that I wrote about a year ago At the very end of the screen we have here, if someone is going to comment, there's going to be a little prompt. And right now it says, leave a reply. You can change it to whatever you want. You could write here, questions, comments. And that's what will appear on screen at the end of the blog post. Have something to add. Now that's not that's not precise. That's that that phrase will appear at the end of all your blog posts. Uh, you can't exactly make one say have something to say, and another one say we'd love your comments. They're all going to say that right above the spot where they can comment. Within the post itself, on the last line, you could write something unique, but that will always appear right above the comment box. Or you could take it out completely. And, but you have to remember in your blog post itself, the last line, for you to write something like, leave a comment, or else they won't see anything. So go ahead and save that. Don't worry about the media screen. Everything that is here is already pretty well set up. So I'm going to skip the media screen, the media settings, and instead we'll go to sharing, another very important screen. Let's go to the sharing settings. So once you take this class, and I mention the other classes that I teach, like social media, or SEO, or e-commerce, so especially the social media class, you take that class and now okay you've you've learned about blogging and you're gonna resolve to to blog and then you take the social media class and then you resolve okay I'm gonna get on Twitter also but then now you're gonna have more work to do because you're gonna have to manage your WordPress blog and your Twitter well here's one way to help you with that publicize connect your blog to popular social network sites and automatically share new posts with your friends so this is saying if I publish something on my blog, it will then also automatically go to Twitter or Facebook or Google+, LinkedIn, Tumblr, or Path. So basically you can share to one of these or all of these social networks at once. 
I won't do it, but you can figure it out. If you click connect, it'll ask you, log in with your Facebook credentials, log in with your Tumblr credentials, and then they'll connect. So that when we publish a post, there'll be the option, also share it on Twitter, also share it on Facebook, yes. So I won't have to manually go over to Facebook and publish it myself and waste time. I can publish that post right on my blog, and it'll automatically go to the networks. Not every network, but the big ones. Yes? Question? Yeah, again, it's not as precise as it could be. This will, as soon as you publish a, if you select to publish, it'll go to those networks. Yeah. It's work, but you can go down and turn them on and off. Yeah, there's a little edit, tiny little edit button. If you don't want to post to Facebook that week, you can take it off. But then it goes back on the next post. Is that what you meant? That let's say you want to post something, but only to Twitter, but not to Facebook? No, I was just saying um, it's not every blog that I want to go on. Oh, okay, well, this is going to be from the point moving forward. It's not going to automatically post an old blog post. Right. But if we write one tomorrow and we have that active, again, it will not automatically go. You'll have to turn it on and off. Don't send this one to social networks. Oh, Just okay. keep it on my site. Okay. Yes? So for the blog, you might have more words or content than what you want to put on Tumblr, right? Does mm -hmm. it just pick the picture and put it on Tumblr, or does it pick the whole thing? I believe it takes the whole thing. So then also like Twitter. Twitter, you're not going to be able to fit your 200 words there. So it's only going to take like the first sentence, whatever that is, and then it'll say, you know, read more. And it might take the picture and put it on also. So again, it's not as precise as it might be. Uh, but this is still good to help us manage some of that. And But honestly, the way my company does it for clients, we don't use the publicize. We manually do this. We go craft a tweet that will fit in 140 characters and, and manually add the link and the picture, maybe even a different picture. Obviously more work, but we have people in the company to do it. For yourself, if you've already got to manage your company and now your blog and now your social media, well, this might help you part of the way. And later on, as you have more time or someone to really work on this, then they would go in and handcraft each post on your blog and on your social media. The other side of that social coin is that I want people themselves to share. Um, I want people that when they see my blog post, they're so inspired by it that they want to like it on Facebook. Or share it on Twitter and that's what this sharing buttons section is. It's a little weird to understand the first time so let me explain it and then we'll, we'll edit it. These are the available services that a person can share to. So I have a Twitter account and if I like your content I want to share it on my Twitter. So those are the possible ones. Here are the ones that are currently enabled for all your blog posts and that's what it's gonna look like. So let's say I only want people, I only want to let people share my stuff on Twitter easily. So I can grab the, the WordPress, press this and move it back, and the Facebook and move it back, and the Google Plus. So now on all my blog posts, there will only be a button at the bottom that says tweet this. I think that's limiting, but I could do that if I want. Let's say I want people to tweet it, tweet it and Facebook it and Google Plus it. Now all my blog posts will automatically have a little button down there that looks like this. It'll say share this and these buttons and then they, can, they themselves can share it to their social media. So what I'm doing there is I'm having other people advertise for me. And that's how sites get traffic, that's how sites go viral, that's why sites have positive SEO results because they've also recruited their followers to share their content. In the social media class we go into details about getting followers, and strategies for social media. But this is part of the puzzle here. Make it easy for people on these networks to share your stuff. I could put these networks over on the gray area and that's what's going to happen there is they will not be visible right away. They'll be under the more button. So that I don't have every single button there cluttering the screen I will have the top three networks perhaps, 
and I would say the order of importance would be Facebook, Twitter, then Google+. I have the main networks, and if they also want to share it to Tumblr or LinkedIn, they can find it under more. That's like a person sharing your blog post on their WordPress. So sharing their sharing your content on their on their WordPress, and then you get an uh, you get a free link back to your WordPress. So it's, as I said earlier, WordPress.com is kind of like a, a blog platform as well as a social media platform because people then can share stuff within WordPress and get more traffic and hits. I would sort of say put all of them but in the gray area. Because for myself, I think it's too cluttered. But maybe you really want people to also email it. So I'll put it there. Print it. For people that still print websites, you can put it there. So you've got easily here the Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and email. And then if they want more networks, they're in there. The look of that is defined by this item here, button style. Right now it's using kind of generic looking icons. They're the official icons, but they're a little generic looking. It's got text. You can change that to say icon only, and notice you get the nice bright icons that stand out. You might like that. You could do text only, which I don't recommend. It looks a little too boring, and maybe people will miss it and not share. And then you've also got the official buttons. This one's cool because this will show you live how much activity you have. And the thing is that popularity breeds popularity. So if someone visits your site and they see this has been shared 5,000 times, this must be good, I'll share it too. So those numbers will automatically show up from the networks. The problem though is that if you're brand new, just started your blog, just started Facebook, etc., these are all going to be zero. And again, popularity breeds popularity. So if then people log in and see 000, okay, it's not that good content, moving on. So maybe in the beginning, keep it to one of these that doesn't give it away that you're a newbie. And then as you get activity and popularity, turn it on and show people, look how popular I am. And instead of it saying, share this, it could be something like, be social. That's the text that will appear. That's the text that will appear below above the, the social sharing buttons. This says that the, uh, the share buttons will be active on your posts, your blog posts, and your pages. We haven't really differentiated what those two are just yet. In short, posts are part of your blog, your blog posts. Pages are your static screens, like your about screen, your contact screen. You know, you probably don't really, you probably won't really get much, many shares out of your about screen. You're most likely going to get shares from your blog posts. So it's up to you. It's not good or bad. I sort of lean toward don't share pages because it really, people don't really do that. They don't share this contact form. Let me share this great contact form from this person. No, I'm going to really share the, the article about how to create a contact form. You might have testimonials. You can add that. Then you've got on the front page. Do you want to share the front page? might be useful, but notice it's not very uh, fine-grained because it'll also attach to the search results and the archive pages, and that's not that useful. So I'm, I'm recommending just posts. If you've got a Twitter account and you add your Twitter username here, when someone tweets your post, your Twitter address will automatically get added to their tweet. That way, 
that again is increasing your exposure which is helping your SEO you can have people like your your posts on or off on is good let people reblog or reshare your posts that's good again it shares your content throughout the web if you don't want that you can turn that off you can have people like a comment that creates a sense of community uh, mm -hmm. so you can leave that on and then we will save changes I won't go into these other settings really. You can explore them on your own. And remember, if you're working on this as just a testing site, go in and make changes and break it, and that's fine. It's not real. But if you really want to know about one of these items, call me during the breaks and lab time and such, and I'll explain it. But I showed you the biggest settings that I think are important. And even though, obviously, the class is billed as blogging for SEO, there's still things we need to do as foundational, isn't there? So we're going to take our break, then we're going to continue to work with WordPress, um, and um, we'll keep learning about it and getting better. So it's 8 o'clock. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.10.